connected. Uh, as Julie mentioned, I work with people in communication. And that means written, spoken, nonverbal, verbal, all the different ways that we can communicate. And I believe now more than ever before, LinkedIn is crucial to you and your business success, whether you're a solopreneur all the way up to enterprise level business people. It's a crucial way for you to tell your company or story brand or your brand story in a way that's scalable. So I like to say get LinkedIn or left out. And that's from my friend, Ebe Reberhand, who's from Florida State. He's the dean, one of the deans of the college of communication. That's my alma mater. So here's the agenda for today. What's in it for me? Going to reinforce again why this is important. We're going to talk a little bit about the LinkedIn algorithms, which is how they prioritize the content that you'll put out there. We're going to have the 12 steps to LinkedIn all-star status. That is not my name. That's actually what LinkedIn calls it. They have five levels from beginner all the way up to all-star. And I'll explain why we all want to get to all star. And then I'm going to show you some useful hacks that you can make your LinkedIn page stand out, plus do a live demo. And then this is a conversation and a dialogue, not a monologue. So please raise your hand, uh, interrupt me. I definitely want to take your questions as we're going along. Now, if you recall, it was when did we do, Julie, was it last fall in October, we did the personal branding panel. And that was really talking about the importance of the personal brand, both the online and offline. So today we're really honing in on your online personal brand. And just as a reminder, what does personal branding mean when you're a business professional? So it's how you see yourself combined with how others see you is your personal brand. Now, I've heard some other professionals say your personal brand is what is how other people describe you when you leave the room. <laughs> However, I think there's a lot more control from your end if you're willing to put the work into it. So I prefer this model that we actually can contribute. It is our choice because guess what? If you say, oh, I don't do any of that stuff. I don't spend time on social. I don't have time for that. You're already a brand. Just Google your name. I promise you something's going to pop up. My mother is 86 years old and has never touched a computer in her entire life. She does not have a smartphone. She has one of those old fashioned phones with the big giant numbers. When I Google her name, she's all over the internet. So why don't you take control of that? Why allow other people to tell your company or brand story? You need to take control of that. So let's talk a little bit more about why LinkedIn matters. People will be looking for you in business, whether they are peers, investors, potential business partners, customers, maybe job seekers where a lot of people are looking for talent right now. You want to be able to be found if you're one of those people trying to hire. LinkedIn is oftentimes the first place people will go to learn more about you. There is a misnomer that LinkedIn is only for looking for a job. Maybe years ago, that might have been the case. Not anymore. LinkedIn is the social media for professionals. This is where we get to share our thought leadership. And in a COVID world, this is also a place for us to network and meet new prospects and meet new stakeholders who could be helpful and successful to your business. And due to Google's and other search engines algorithms, oftentimes when you Google your name, your LinkedIn profile almost always comes up as one of the top selections on page one on a Google search result. Test it for yourself and see. So that LinkedIn story is helping to tell your story and how you can bring value to your customers and stakeholders. So just a quick rundown of some of the statistics about LinkedIn, 700 million users worldwide, 40% of those people are using 
LinkedIn every day, 90 million of them are senior leaders, 63 million are decision makers, and 17 million opinion leaders. 10 million of the, do you want me to hop back so you can get a picture of that? There you go. <laughs> and actually the article that I'm going to be sharing in a PDF after this has a lot of these statistics as well. 10 million C-suite executives are using LinkedIn. And this part I think is most important, especially for smaller business owners. LinkedIn drives more than 50% of all social media traffic to your website. More so than, unless you're a beauty product salesperson <laughs> where Instagram might be your jam, LinkedIn really does a fantastic job of sending people to your website. 41% of millionaires are on LinkedIn, 44% of LinkedIn users take home $75,000 a year or more. And this also is a way to help you find your ideal customer by using the search features that are in LinkedIn at your fingertips. So why focus on this? Why spend time on this? Our time is our most precious asset. We cannot get it back. So. I believe that you need to carve out a little bit of time each week to work on your LinkedIn profile so that it can start to bring in leads for you and help extend your story. So the obvious internal reasons why LinkedIn might be important is relationship building. You can message people, you can ask for conversations. Now, I will say a lot of people say, oh my gosh, I hate that LinkedIn. Every day I'm getting a message from someone trying to sell me life insurance or to be my wealth advisor. You're right, that it, it, it's gotten a bit much, but it's just as quick to delete, 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 or ignore those invitations if you know it's a sales pitch. But there are ways to build relationships. I'm going to show you some case studies in a few minutes. The not so obvious reasons why you should focus on your professional brand on LinkedIn is it's a powerful amplifier for your organization. It's a way to get your message, your value, what problems you solve out into the marketplace for free or you can boost it. Now, of all the social media platforms, LinkedIn's the most expensive when it comes to boosting. So you wanna be extremely strategic if you do choose to boost something, but that's almost advanced level before you're willing to put some money behind it. And then LinkedIn gives us scale. It speaks to a wider audience than you even have following you. And I'm gonna show you that in just a minute. So I wanna tell you about a case study. This is a client of mine, MNF Bank. They are based here in North Carolina. They have nine branches across the state of North Carolina. They are a black owned bank. They started in Durham more than a hundred years ago on what used to be called the Black Wall Street. They have a tremendous history in North Carolina. So in on June 25th of 2020, it was a Saturday night and Eleanor, the branch manager from the Winston-Salem m and Bank was going to bed and checked her email just before going to bed. And she saw a message via LinkedIn that someone had sent her a direct message. So she clicked on it. It was an employee from Netflix. She was like, that's odd. The message read, hey, I'm so-and-so from Netflix, would love to talk to you. Is m and a black owned bank. Eleanor said, why, yes, it is. And I'm a branch manager at one of them. June 30th, five days later, Netflix announced it was moving $100 million of cash reserves to black owned banks across the United States. m and was a part of one of those banks to receive that cash infusion. What? <laughs> Like, hello, if she had not checked her email, had not responded to that message through LinkedIn, m and could have missed out on this huge opportunity. Right? So is it worth your time to delete the certified financial planners? <laughs> yes. If you, you never know who might be sending you a message.
totally worth your time. So now let's get down to the business of LinkedIn and learn a little bit more about it. When you are planning to post on there, again, not that you're looking for a job. This is all non-job related stuff unless you are looking for a new opportunity because you are wanting to change your career or change your position. Of course, you can put that out there. However, there are so many other content types you can put out there. But before you start writing that first post, you need to define who your audience is. Are you looking for people in your industry? Are you looking, looking to connect with thought leaders? What pain points does your business or service solve for other people? What issue are you passionate about that you might want to share? And then reaching out to your colleagues. In our remote world, we may have people all spread across the country, and this is also another way to connect. So you want to make sure that you're thinking about that audience. The next piece is the algorithm hierarchy. This is how LinkedIn decides whether they're going to show your post to more people. Now, don't worry, this is in the handout. The, 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 all of this information will be shared with you in the handouts, okay? So the top of the pyramid, the, the piece that's going to get the most attention that the, the bots on LinkedIn recognizes when you put your post together is a text post plus an uploaded document. And you might say, well, what in the world would I do with that? What is that? How about this? Let's say you've written a really cool blog post for your website. Take that blog post, copy and paste it into a Word document and save it as a PDF and upload that PDF to your LinkedIn profile or to the post, and I'll show you how to do that, with a call to action asking people to read that blog post. That is the top number one piece of content that LinkedIn is sharing at the moment. The reason being is they want more people to use that feature. They reward users who are taking advantage of their different features. The next thing is a natively uploaded video. What I mean by that is rather than just sharing someone else's post that has a video, upload a video from your computer or phone directly to LinkedIn on your post, and that meets that hierarchy right there. A text post is next. This really confused me. I thought, because I've always been trained over and over again, always have an image, always have an image. I thought this would be flip-flopped, but according to the research and the articles that I was looking at, text posts are getting even more love than text posts with image. Now, I never post, very rarely do I ever post just text. I always usually put some kind of image because I know humans will stop their scroll when they see a picture. And, and then, oh, go ahead. And it seems like that could be more important to have, you know, the live people. Indeed. That's it. So I, uh, again, I questioned this. Yeah. I ignore this recommendation and I almost always put some kind of picture or quote or some imagery that's going to stop a human's eye from the scroll. Yeah, and I definitely will stop the images. Post on yes. And the other thing, too, if you were to do a hierarchy of images, humans are connected to human faces. So a face over a, a caricature or an animation, a real human face, and if possible, a real photograph rather than a stock image. People can spot stock a mile away. You can tell they're too perfect. But if you have a real image, that's going to stop people in the scroll quicker. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so how often? Again, if you're not using LinkedIn often, asking you to do this may seem like a heavy lift. But I promise you, aren't you? How many of you all are reading every day anyway about your industry, about your competitors, about best practices? You're doing it anyway. So let's say you come across a really cool article on ink. Rather than just saving it to your Evernote, which I learned how to do from Emily, 
if I find a really cool article that I think people should read about, I will copy that link from the Inc. magazine and then share it on LinkedIn and put a post like, hey, for those of you who are interested in learning about how body language is a huge, uh, a huge way to affect the way you speak, check out this article. And so you see how you, you're already reading. You're already looking at content. Select the ones that are most meaningful to you that you can add your own piece of knowledge and then share it with your network. So if you're doing that already, maybe two times, maybe if you're not using LinkedIn at all yet, maybe challenge yourself to start by putting one post a week. Then let's bump it up to two posts a week. Now, the people who are on there all the time, do not post more than once a day. Now there is a rule that no new posts at least six hours apart. That that's a lot. That's people who are who basically are living on LinkedIn. Maybe they're LinkedIn educators. They maybe are one of those influencers for LinkedIn. But for the normal business person, I think that two three times a week is plenty. Again, and then when you take that, think about that. Inc. Magazine article that you thought was really cool. Now, think about a different kind of post, something that's not someone else's content, your own content. Maybe you're attending a NABO event and you learn something cool about XYZ. Take your own photo, upload it and say, I learned this. Has anybody ever heard of this? Blank, blank, blank. Or did you know that and a cool statistic? Wondering for if you all would like to weigh in, do you think this is true? And, and encourage a conversation or engagement within that post. So someone else's content, a piece of your own content. That way it doesn't feel like so much if you can commit to doing just that. The hashtag piece, why is that important? When I'm looking for content to post, sometimes I will look up presentation best practices, hashtag presenters, hashtag TEDx speakers, hashtag DEI speakers, hashtag whatever the content is, bet you you'll find something. You do that search in LinkedIn and all sorts of content is going to start showing up for you. And then you might find a really cool article that someone else posted that you want to share with your network. So you see how it's all interconnected. I have a question about hashtags. Um, you know, my ideal client, I think of her as a high achieving woman and, and I'll often just use that hashtag, high achieving woman. Um, but when I check on how popular that is, it's not super popular. So more popular or more commonly used hashtags though are so generic, like working women. Um, so I'm a little bit at a loss, but is it better to go better for me when I'm posting to use a hashtag that is really frequently used? I would do a combo. Okay. I would use your own. Because if you use your own every single time, it becomes more popular. But then you might put executive women, executive women leaders, women leaders, C-suite women. Like you, and you can you can search too to see what ones are trending the most, and then add in your own. That's what I would do. So that's why you would use maybe three hashtags. They they. According to LinkedIn, they don't want you to do what a lot of people do over on Instagram, where it looks like they have 50 hashtags that they copy and paste into every single post. No, no, no. You don't want to do that on LinkedIn. Two to three is enough. Now, here is the way LinkedIn, now you've created this post, either your own post or a piece of content that you're sharing. And this is how LinkedIn looks at your posts. First, they're going to show it to your new connections. How about that? I, I actually like that because when it's someone new that you're trying to get their attention or you'd like them to get to know you or your business more, LinkedIn's already helping you out. They're showing it to the new connections first, then your connections, then your followers. Those are not the same thing. And I'll show you how to find out 
how many of each you have on your own profile. Mutual hashtag followers, that's why the hashtag is important. And then group members. Show of hands, is anyone a member of a group on LinkedIn? Okay, good. If you're not yet, that might be a great place to start getting to know some people outside of your current network. Yes. Use LinkedIn at all right now. The only things that come through for me are recruiters and I'm like, chat. But do you have to go to LinkedIn or like my Facebook pops up on my phone? Is there a way to make it so that it, you don't have to physically go to their site? Well, things? that's notifications. So you can turn on LinkedIn notifications on your phone to let you know that someone has either messaged you or, and, and it's all customizable as to, but when you click on it, it's going to open in LinkedIn. Okay. You won't be able to, I don't know if it'll show you what the message is. Now it, it may in your email. Does it email you? That's another question. If you have that turned on. So you turn on and customize you, what, and that way Exactly. Know. It is completely customizable in the settings, how you want LinkedIn to communicate with you. Sure. All right. The golden hour. Has anybody ever heard of the golden hour? Yes, it's it works. Guaranteed. What this means, the first hour after you've posted a piece of content, we call it the golden hour. If your post receives, now this is, there, there are gradations to this. If your post receives 20 or more comments within the first hour, LinkedIn is going to promote it for broader distribution. Meaning people who have never met you or even know who you are may be shown your post. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you an example here in a moment. So when I post something, I babysit it during that first hour. Now, I, if you saw my office at home, you would laugh. I have three to four screens going at once. I always have two laptops because for me, and then I have a shared monitor back here. So I've got three screens going at, at once because I'm often looking at notes from one to write on the other right? It helps my, that's my process. I work more efficiently with having multiple screens. So when I post something on LinkedIn, on one of those screens, I've got LinkedIn up. So I can see, is someone posting? Has someone said a comment? And if they do, I jump in and thank them for their comment or respond to that comment. And that's telling LinkedIn, ooh, this post might be relevant. We might show it to more people. So that's why they call it the golden hour. Here is the example that I am going to show you. I posted back in October when I announced I was leaving my company, Walk West, to join UNC Health. I posted it and I babysat it. I had these photographs plus a, a fairly lengthy um, write up as to you know why I was leaving my own company that I helped start to go somewhere else. I have 4,667 followers. Within a week, this post had been shown to 26,500 people. I don't know all those people, but LinkedIn saw that I was getting quite a bit of activity during that golden hour. So they thought, hmm, we're gonna send this out. And funny enough, I have since been, contacted by people I don't know asking, does UNC need XYZ or, or a conference organizer, a healthcare conference organizer looking for a medical doctor to speak at their conference. And that is very relevant to my job. And it's because I, this was shown to people that I don't even know. Now, after 24 hours you can click on the insights to see who is looking at your post so here all right so within those twenty six thousand views i had 427 reactions 234 comments 262 people from cisco now cisco is a former client of mine i used to do a lot of training there 
Red Hat, 124, NC State, 114, UNC Health, 106, SAS, 96, and on and on and on. And then what were their roles? Business strategist, executive director, marketing, founder, corporate finance specialist. And then where were these people? 7,500 from Raleigh, Durham, 740 from New York, Charlotte, Washington, Atlanta. It goes through. Isn't that information that you would like to know? Is that from premium LinkedIn or just regular? I have regular LinkedIn. I don't even pay. Okay. I've had LinkedIn premium in the past and I was not making good use of it. And so I just decided I'm going to just keep going at the free version. And I'm not in direct sales anymore. That's all. And I feel like that is really helpful if you're in sales. But since I've stepped away from a day-to-day -day selling role, I, I didn't want to spend that extra money. So this, again, demonstrates how important that golden hour is. Okay, now the 12 steps to get to all-star status, you will get a handout. So you'll get, you're going to get two handouts. The one will have a lot of the statistics and algorithm information about LinkedIn. And then the second document is literally the 12 steps you need to take to get to all-star status. Some of you may already be at all-star status. I'll show you how you can find out in a moment. But if you do at least half to three quarters of these 12 steps, you should get to all-star status pretty quickly. This again is the document you'll be getting. Now here's where I meant all-star status. There are five levels that LinkedIn grades your profile, starting with beginner all the way down to all-star. Our goal is to get to all-star because if you can get to all-star, more people are going to see your content and that could lead to a conversation for your business. So step one, please use a decent profile picture. I cannot tell you how many times I've looked on LinkedIn and seen stuff that just doesn't belong on a professional network. Now, it doesn't mean you have to be in a three-piece suit, but let's be real. LinkedIn is a professional platform intended for business. So look like how you would like to show up at your business. Now, if you are a nurse, sure, you can wear scrubs in your picture, but you, you get what I mean. And then just make sure it's a decent our cameras today, if you put your smartphone into the portrait mode, you can get a stunning picture. Yeah, I mean, you don't have to go out and hire professionals. You can get really nice photos from your phone. And if you don't know how, just ask a teenager. <laughs> they will show you how. <laughs> oh, another thing about profile photos. All those inbound requests to connect, if there's no photo, I usually don't accept because I think it's going to be a spam connection or someone from God knows where, you know, just filling up my feed. So I, I only accept when someone has a photo. Now, here's a place that a lot of people don't even know they could change. This is called your headline. Underneath John's name, if you don't change the headline, it defaults to what your current role is. But you can change that. Because guess what? If someone's visiting your LinkedIn profile anyway, they can go and see what your job is. Because guess what? Over here, it says it. It says where you currently work over. It says where you currently work right here, like Abler, and then your most recent education. So underneath the name, you have the opportunity to say a little bit something different about yourself. John is business development executive, digital accessibility advocate, DEI champion, TEDx speaker, board member, investor, and author. Don't you get a fuller picture of who John is just by that headline? So I would recommend that you take out your job, your current job, and change it to something more interesting. And I'll show you how to do that in a moment when we do the live demo. The next thing, complete the about section. 
Some of you may not even have an about section because you have not activated it. I'll show you how to do it in a second too. But this is a key part of your LinkedIn profile. It's your opportunity to grab a reader's attention to make sure you're outlining who you are and what you care about. This is not the bio that's on your company website. This is a first person written explanation of who you are and why, why you do the work you do. It's an opportunity for people to learn that extra bit about you other than just looking at your jobs, okay? I, I'll show you mine because I, I love that this is a chance for you to share what matters. People wanna work with people that they can connect with. Next is, oh, I've got this little slide hiding over here. Another, the about section. This is, an, I love this woman's. This is Katie Clancy. She's a realtor in, uh, in um, Massachusetts. So her audience, remember I talked about how you wanna know your audience. She's looking to attract people who want to buy property in Cape Cod. No bones about it. She's a realtor in Cape Cod. That's who she's trying to reach. Her title is more than a title. She seems like a trusted advisor. What is her descriptor? The happiest person in real estate. That sounds like somebody I might want to work with. The tone, friendly and approachable. So look at how she described herself. When I want the freshest oysters, I don't go to the fish counter at the grocery store. I go to John, the East Dennis oyster guy. When my husband wants a perfectly tailored suit, we don't go to the mall. We go to Puritan Clothing in Hyannis. When I want the best chocolate this side of the Alps, I don't go to the candy store. I go to the hot chocolate sparrow in Orleans. Does this woman know Cape Cod or what? This is really a great opportunity to see how you can tell a greater story. She clearly knows the market. So I think that's a, a, a great way to think about how you're describing yourself. Yes. I want to ask about the headline because I've been um, told from different people that you want to have in there what people would search for. So like going back to hers, no one's going to search for the happiest what I might do is the happiest real tour okay. in Cape Cod, because if someone searches realtor Cape Cod, there you go. So it's just a small syntax change with, with the wording there. That's really good. What Julie said really matters for search engine optimization. And we're going to talk about that when you are writing your job descriptions, you want to have key terms that you know people are searching for. I helped a friend last fall revamp her LinkedIn profile because she hadn't looked for a job in 20 years. And she, hadn't, she had hardly touched her LinkedIn. So we spent an afternoon and filled out all the sections, but then she was looking for a pharmaceutical rep's job. So we made sure that in the job, and she was already in pharmaceuticals, but she was looking to look at a new company. And so we made sure that in her job descriptions, there were certain terminology that is only used in the pharma world that pharma recruiters would understand and, and, pharma, and pharmaceutical um, HR people would understand. I didn't know what some of it was, but anyone in pharma does. And so if you Google that term, her profile pops up. So the search engine optimization, SEO, you all are probably told to do that for your websites all the time. Do it for your LinkedIn profile. Sure, sure. Okay. So make sure, uh, let me go here. It's important to fill out what it is you do at your job. Don't just put you know, whatever your company is, founder and the dates. What do you do there that brings value to your customers? This is not a resume where you're listing, don't copy and paste your resume information. Write like you speak, put it in a conversational tone, 
put some cool wins in there that you've had and do this for every job. So maybe you start out and, and this is the way I, because try, to try to accomplish all 12 of these steps seems like a heavy lift. So what I recommend people do is try to knock out two steps a week and within a month to six weeks, you'll have it all done because now you're also committing to two posts a week, right? So your profile and two posts a week. Also, I think it's important to put in your volunteer experience. How many people here volunteer on a board or a committee or do something? A lot of people do that. I like to connect with people who are passionate about some of the nonprofit work I do. So I look at that stuff. People can look at mine and tell very quickly that I'm you know, passionate about health and, and education. So the, these are other areas to help tell your story. All right, the education course and certificate section. I happen to be certified in three levels in TILT 365. Has anybody heard of TILT 365? It is very much like DISC or Myers-Briggs or Strength Finders, but the 2.0 version of it. It actually was started here in Raleigh 25 years ago by an incredible researcher by the name of Pam Boney. She's kind of like Brene Brown, but not as famous. Okay, she's a social psychologist and she's worked in HR for years. And so she created Tilt 365. And the way I describe it when comparing it to the other assessment tools, it's like what Uber did to taxis and Airbnb did to hotels. Tilt 365 has done that to Myers-Briggs. It is all on an easy to use platform that the learnings are right there at your fingertips always. But anyhow, if someone were looking for a TILT 365 certified practitioner and they search it, I might pop up because I'm certified and it's in my descriptions of my certifications. I'm also green level, a uh, uh, green belt in Six Sigma. If someone were looking for that, they can find me there. So these are reasons why you want to put all that stuff in there all these different things. And, and again, it's more about being found. It's not so much about creating a new resume, right? This is, people want to understand the fuller story of who you are. This part, skills, expertise, and endorsements. I, this used to be really popular about eight or 10 years ago. The thing would pop up like, would you like to, um, in, uh, endorse Julie for writing? Do you want to endorse Emily for networking? And it asks, that isn't as important anymore, but I would still go through and look and see, are there things that you do that you can go ahead and endorse yourself? <laughs> there may be a skill set that you have that is unique, that makes you stand out. The next part is get connected. In order to get to all-star status, you have to have a minimum amount of connections. It's not a lot, it's like 50. So most, pe most people, if you've been in your career long enough, have a lot. This is a heavier ask for a 22-year-old brand new college graduate. But if you haven't spent any time on LinkedIn in a while, you just may not have very many connections. But it, LinkedIn requires you to have 50 or more to get to that all-star status. And at the click of a button, you can upload your Outlook or Gmail or Hotmail. Does anybody still use Hotmail? Maybe contacts into LinkedIn and it will automatically give you, would you like to connect with this person, this person, this person? You go, brrr, yes, 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 yes. If they're people you know, you don't want to spam everybody who you've ever emailed with in the last 20 years. Make sure you know who these people are. So that's another quick way. And you'll see when you open your profile, now when you click on the actual blue 500 plus, it will tell you how many you actually have. Next is getting recommendations. To get to all-star status, you need a minimum of three recommendations. 
LinkedIn profiles are an acid test to demonstrate your full scope of knowledge, your experiences and skills. Let someone else do the credibility talking for you. You're bolstering your profile and then adding that strength by having someone else tell their story about you. So I have some, this uh, Holly Yanker is, uh, she works at the education, uh, let's see, EDPNC, Economic Development Partnership of North Carolina. They are basically the salespeople for the state of North Carolina. They're the ones that are landing the, you know, the Apple, um, Amazons, all the stuff. So they're constantly selling North Carolina to businesses all over the world. It's important that those people have good LinkedIn profiles. Because if you're really good at selling your stuff, but you're not selling yourself, there's a mismatch, right? So she has received 31 recommendations and she's given 12. Here's a question a lot of people say, well, I feel awkward asking someone to write a recommendation for me. You know three people who would be happy to do it. All of us in this room, if you've spoken to them for more than 10 minutes and learned about your business or and, and they've learned about yours, you know three people who would give a recommendation. Here's what I would suggest. I'm working on my LinkedIn profile. And one of the things I'm trying to get are some recommendations. I would be happy to give you a recommendation if you would do the same for me. Check. There you go. Now, it's important that the recommendations come from a wide variety of people, not necessarily just your friends or your peers, but maybe people that you worked with 10 years ago at a different company. Maybe it could be a former supervisor or a former direct report. You know those trusted relationships that you've had in your career that this is not a difficult ask, but offer to give them a recommendation too. The next thing, and this is this is a little higher level. This is not required. I know people who get to all-star status without changing this part, but I think it's just easier. This is my, when you put my name in LinkedIn, at the very top, the URL of that page is linkedin.com slash in slash Sharon Delaney McLeod. Look over here. This is my uh, former colleague, Donald Thompson. You can see his name right there, my name right there. My friend who's a professional speaker, she's a former Apache helicopter pilot. She calls herself the pilot speaker. This is my husband. Mike McLeod 855BA32 slash. Well, Mike McLeod's kind of a common name. Have you ever tried to look for someone on LinkedIn and it's like Mary Smith? Oh, good Lord, there's probably 2,000 Mary Smiths. Which one is it? If the picture's not there or the picture's too small, this is a quick way to make sure that you are found easier. They call it a vanity URL because it says your name, okay? Tell people what interests you. This is something that I have found to be a good door opener. I will go to people's pages and see, hmm, what's the common ground? We didn't work together at any point. We didn't go to the same school. What can be a conversation starter for me to connect with this person? Okay, so, oh, this person says that they like the, Ameri the American Marketing Association of the Triangle. That's a fabulous association. I've been to those meetings. That could be a connection point that I can, hey, I see that you're a member or you've attended events at the AMA. I'd love to connect with you to talk about XYZ. Um, could it be uh, SHRM or a, a, a college or even this like influencers listed here? I love me some Brene Brown. I actually had someone reach out to me and say, hey, I see you're a fan of Brene Brown. Me too. Have you ever thought about XYZ I'd like to connect? I said, yes, because she did the extra work to do that. It's so easy. It's right there. Step 11, complete your content. Oh, yes. Yeah. Is there a way to adjust the order they show up in here? Or is it based on like when you follow? I, um, I think it's right now, I think it's just based on when you 
clicked on it to follow it. I, I don't believe there's a way yet. They do add features all the time. They recently added one where you could change the order of your volunteer. They used to automatically do it by date. But now if you want to do a hierarchy of an organization you're more passionate about, you could put that on top. So it's something you want to go in and check because sometimes they do add an editable feature rather than just automatically doing a by date. You're welcome. This is such a miss that a million people have. They, they don't fill out their contact information. I don't know what I have. And I have a friend that I emailed him using the email he had listed. Well, guess what? He shut down that email two years prior. So then I was like, oh gosh, how am I going to get a hold of this guy? Because a lot of times people ignore those messages that come through LinkedIn. So make sure that you have updated your contact information. Do not put your phone number. There is an option to do that, but I would, unless it's a business phone number, but don't put your personal cell because you're going to start getting all those spam malicious calls. But I would put a business phone number per se. Okay. So just some quick things there. It also allows you to put a couple of websites. So I have my UNC website, my place of employment, as well as my own company, my speaker website here. And then step 12, use the platform. Don't let it go to sleep. There's so many different ways you can engage with it. I showed you my friend, John, his, his headline before. I'm a huge fan of John. I redid his LinkedIn profile for him a couple of years ago. John is an incredible human being. He's a, a husband, a father, a business founder, a TEDx speaker, and he also happens to be blind. And so that's why I wanted to help him with his LinkedIn profile. And he's done an incredible job. And in a year's time, the amount of connections he has grown, but the amount of business leads and speaking engagements he's done as a result of the LinkedIn work is incredible. And the speaking engagements lead to business contacts. So it's just this circle of, of it's constantly feeding itself. So I'm going to show you in a, in a, in a, in a second what the featured section is of your profile. Many people don't have this enacted and it's a quick, easy way to showcase a particular post that's important to you. We featured John these posts where when you go to his profile, this featured section is right up top in like the top of the fold, like the old newspaper days. Because he's, he's blind, he had surgery done a year and a half ago that gave him a little bit of vision back and he saw his two sons faces for the first time in his life. And so we uploaded the video of him describing what it was like to see his son's faces for the first time. It got so many comments and views and it's a really special part of his story. So we keep that in the featured section. You might have, like, maybe your business won an incredible award and you posted about it six months ago. We can pull that in and put it as a featured piece of content. It's like your headline builder. You can, you can have, like, there is no reason you shouldn't want to toot your horn. It's a competitive, noisy marketplace. Toot, toot, toot. Also, over here is a post... Dr. Burks, who's the CEO of UNC Health, wrote an op-ed asking people to think about healthcare workers. We're all tired of the COVID. Think about healthcare workers, how exhausted they are from the pandemic. It's just, it's unbelievable. I get to work from home in my jammies. They don't get to do any of that. And so he wrote an op-ed just asking people to be more empathetic because the amount of violence that's happening in hospitals today is just sickening violence in hospitals, patients and caregivers attacking nurses and CNAs on the regular. It's shocking, absolutely shocking. He wrote this after more violence kept continuing to happen. I mean, it's just, it happened here in UNC Health in a hospital. Someone wouldn't, 
that you weren't allowed to bring in a visitor and a man lost it and attacked staff members at the hospital. Anyhow, this was a really important op-ed. So what we asked is everybody in the organization to please share it in their networks. So WREL posted it and then we to WREL gets more than a million visitors a month. So we know it has tr a huge amount of relevancy. And so my big boss, Lisa Schiller, she posted it. And what she did is she took a quote from his article and just copied and pasted it here and then said, well said by our CEO and she tagged him. And so it got way, it got tons of eyeballs on it. Yes. Would you mind talking a little bit about tagging people? Because sometimes mm -hmm. I feel like when we tag a lot of people um, that are relevant to the post, not just random, it still doesn't get as much traction as other posts. There's, I have read articles about tagging no more than three people. Mm -hmm. If you tag 14, 20 people, I don't know if there's some cutoff, and I'd love to know that. That's something I should actually Google, but I've noticed the same. I'm a member of the National Speakers Association, and our Carolinas chapter president always tags everybody, like the whole membership. And I I think that's a mistake. And I don't I think LinkedIn does not like that. I would only tag the super relevant people within that story or that post. Three to five max. Just like don't over hashtag two to three max. Okay. Uh, so let's get down to just some of the basics. When you create a post, when you open it up, there are options down below. You can click to add a photo. You can add a video. And here, remember I mentioned up top how a document is getting high praise from LinkedIn's algorithm. You click on that and then it opens up a way for you you to upload a document. So it's really easy right there. Now down here, you can celebrate an occasion, find an extra, it shows you share a profile, create a job, create a poll, offer help. All these things are right there to help you get started. My good friend Chuck Hester is a LinkedIn pro. He does workshops like this all the time. He goes in and redoes CEOs LinkedIn profiles all the time. He spends an awful lot of time. There is a feature called polls on LinkedIn that when they introduced it, again, any new feature and you use it gets high praise from the algorithm gods. And so he started doing polls like a lot. I feel like it was almost too much. I would come up with something that would be really relevant to an issue or a topic or something that's in the conversation nowadays, I wouldn't be doing a poll every other day, maybe one a week. So his poll, a good number of us are still working remotely. There isn't the normal office interaction we had when we worked physically side by side. How do you as an organization maintain and encourage company, I think the team members? Uh, yeah, how do you maintain and encourage company culture when you're still working remotely? You put that question out and then people voted. And then they also added in their own comments. Again, this is a newer feature on LinkedIn. And so they showed it to more people because they want you to be using it. Another example of how you can use LinkedIn, and this is now we're going like extra credit. This is an advanced feature, and that is LinkedIn Live. It is your own broadcast platform. For the first couple of years, they were beta testing it only on a very small select number of people. Is everything okay? Oh. Oh. So I'm just seeing there's whatever screen you're sharing. Not sharing it. That's so weird. Okay, hold on. One moment. It's showing now. Okay.
Has it been this way the entire time? Oh no. Hmm. Okay. Does it go away when I do this? Really? Which screen? Oh my gosh. I am so sorry. Okay, let me uh, stop down. So, uh, I think you have to make put that put your presentation in uh, presentation mode first, and then share. So, hit put a uh, quick play from the start. Or from the current slide, yeah. and then share it over here. Yeah. So then, are you able to see? No, I don't see where the share the share button. So that, uh, where is it? See, that's the thing. When I share, it goes full screen over here. Maybe I'll just keep it like this so that they can see it. And okay. I'll, yeah, if you just want to make this, I'll make this larger. Mm -hmm. Gosh, I'm I'm sorry. I wish we had seen that text earlier. Well, you have to still uh, share the screen. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. My apologies. Okay, whoops. Put myself over there. Okay. And would you be willing to do a PDF of your slides? Of course. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I think that will solve that. Yes. Okay. So there'll be three things that come following this. Okay, so sure, sure. All right, so this is LinkedIn Live, which when they first released it, it was to very limited numbers of people. And you would apply. I applied for a year, every three months, every, uh, could not. And I'm active on LinkedIn. I thought I would get access earlier on, and I didn't. And then finally, they opened up the floodgates last year. All you do is go in, just Google how to apply for LinkedIn Live and a LinkedIn page will pop up and you click on it and you can apply from your personal page or and or your company page if you have a LinkedIn company page. But for your personal page, it says click here and it, you just fill out a form field and usually within 24 to 48 hours, you will get a notification that you've been granted access to go live on LinkedIn. Now, again, this is next level skill set. You can't just open up LinkedIn like on your phone and hit go like you might on Facebook or Instagram. You actually have to use a third party service. This, what you see here is called StreamYard. There is a free version and then there's a paid version for 20 bucks a month. The paid version allows you to do this customized branding. So my friend John at Abler, the colors are blue and orange. And so I was able to build this background and all these graphics in Canva to make it uh, match his branding. And it's really cool because you can have more than one guest. You can show videos, you can add photos. It's like a television production studio. It's really incredible. I'm getting ready to launch a LinkedIn live broadcast series for UNC Health for talent recruitment. So when you go live on LinkedIn Live, it alerts all your followers? It, it yes, it, it will, but well, and here's what you, um, oh yes, Melanie, you love StreamYard. Yeah, it's the best because it's pretty easy to use. So what you, when you create a LinkedIn live broadcast, 
you schedule it in advance and then it automatically creates a post for you to fill it out and it at the same time creates an event so you can create an event on linkedin and then you can it will show up to your followers and connections and it will say uh all access with john is coming up on thursday at noon set a reminder click if you want to rsvp it gives you all sorts of options for your followers so you can't just i mean i i investigated this in a couple things but i i noticed um like so you can't just spontaneously go live no because of everything you just said yes that doesn't really make sense um and then the other thing in the their help guide about LinkedIn Live that sort of took me aback was um, that they they really they said that you what I took away and I'm not sure I got this straight was that um, if you want to see live comments you have to have two different computers and ideally someone else manning the second computer like you. Again, it's it's so yes it it almost requires a producer it doesn't you don't have to i mean i've done my own linkedin lives but i also used to be a producer so i and i always use two screens so i have my one computer here with a webcam that i'm broadcasting live on and then i've got my phone for the comments or my second screen here where i'm checking to see if comments are coming in now, I have a friend that I'm going to show you here in just a moment who does LinkedIn Live twice a week, every week, completely consistently for the last two or three years. Wow. And he does it all on his own. He does use StreamYard, but with StreamYard, the comments are right there. So when you open up StreamYard, and I actually can show you, you don't even have to go over to LinkedIn. StreamYard will pull in the comments and questions for you right there which is really handy. Yeah. There are other ones called Restream and there's multiple other platforms or third-party vendors that do this. I find StreamYard to be the simplest and most user-friendly. I'm about to, tr to train some HR people how to do it. <laughs> I'm gonna produce the first few shows for them, but after that, we gotta clip their wings. They gotta fly. The nice thing too about um, LinkedIn Live is once that, and you can go as long as you want, the best practices say that you should broadcast for at least 10 minutes. And you have to also set expectations. The first few shows we did with John, not a single live viewer, not a one. It's very disappointing. Or there might be one or two and they were our own coworkers. <laughs> But here's the beauty, don't be too disappointed. What you now have created is a 15 minute piece of content that is a saved video that you can download, put on your website, chop it up into shorter video vignettes, put it over on Facebook. You can re-upload them as smaller three minute vignettes. There's so many different things you can do with this piece of content. The other thing that's lovely with LinkedIn Live is that it does live captioning. I'm a huge fan of live captioning for two big reasons. Number one, accessibility. Accessibility, accessibility, accessibility. And I say this because I learned that from my friend John. Yes, he's blind, so he's not reading the captions, but we're talking about inclusivity for everyone, including people who have hearing problems. So they also have, there's the second big reason, there's a lot of research that shows if you have captions on your video, people are more likely to stop in their scroll to see what, what it's, because it's silent. When it's scrolling, it's silent. And only when you stop it and click on the volume button, do you actually hear the audio? So if you see the captions, people are more likely to stop. I'm part of a peer group here in Ohio, and I did within the peer group and they were really clear that the longest they'll spend on the video on LinkedIn is like two or three minutes. Which I thought was interesting because I get that you know with live video going longer it like gives people time to get there. Yeah. Yeah. 
you know, catch up with you and watch you. But um, in terms of people watching it when it's not alone, like. It has to be you know, compelling content for people to want to stick around. So that's, that's your challenge as the host or with your guests that you better have some amazing content to share. Otherwise you are going to lose them. But the other thing too is you do record for 15 minutes and then take each question that you've asked your guest and edit it out into, you know, five different three minute chunks that you can then upload because we know people's attention span is so short. So there's lots of different ways to, I don't like that that awful expression to skin a cat because I have a cat. What is that horror? There's got to be a better one. To slice and dice it. To slice it, but yeah, to slice it and dice it. There we go. Jimmy Cat would be furious with me right now. He's my cat. Here's my friend Larry Long, the one I mentioned a second ago who goes live twice a week on his own channel every week for the last, I think it's probably almost two years now. He was one of the first people I knew who was granted access to LinkedIn Live. When he first started doing LinkedIn Live, he had like three or 4,000 connections and followers. He now has 30,000 followers. This time last year during the pandemic, his company downsized and he lost his job. But he had been doing this and throughout that time, he was starting to get more and more requests to speak at this sales conference, to kick off this sales conference. My friend Larry is now a six-figure full-time speaker, just kicking butt and taking names. Yes, and it all started here on LinkedIn. He's incredible, Larry Long. He's called the chief energy officer. I, I've never seen someone so engaging on camera. He has a golden microphone. And here's the whole funny thing is, he's in like a room in his house. It's not even a fancy studio. He's right here. He's, he's just delightful to watch. And he's constantly encouraging engagement. I'll show you some of his stuff so you can understand why. I would check out his profile because he's really done a great job. Actually, funny enough, it was him last year that I tried to get a hold of his email address and his contact information, even with 30,000 followers was wrong. So, you know, we all can use the, the, we can all improve our profiles, but he really has created an entire career based on what he's done here. So a summary, and then we're gonna go into the demo. Use all the sections that are available to you. I'll show you how to do that. Import your contacts. You can upload your Gmail list. Again, don't be spammy. Look for people that you actually have a relationship with or, or a connection with. Use those SEO tactics, those keywords. Ask and give recommendations. Join and engage in groups and then publish articles. Let me show you how to publish an article again. I'd mentioned it at the top. This is my LinkedIn profile and the articles that I've done. So almost all of these were newsletters that I used to send out on behalf of my company, Green Room Communications. What did I do? Copied and pasted the newsletter, stuck it into LinkedIn and published it. A couple of my articles got a lot of engagement and then helped build my brand as a communication expert. So there's the option of uploading, taking a blog post and uploading it as a PDF as a document. Or writing it natively. Or yes. making it an article. And I'm just wondering, um, I mean, and again, this is all about the algorithm. Yes. exactly how it works, but um, do you have any sense of like what the higher value is? So the articles, writing articles within the platform has been around a lot longer and not very many people make use of it. And so years ago, it was getting highly rewarded. But according to that research that I did in 2021, they were rewarding the uploaded document, which is so bizarre. I think I, I was like, why wouldn't you want just to send people over to the article part? But that's what the research was saying. So, but yes, that's, I've looked into that because I've wondered. The other thing you can do that really helps is, do you see right here? You can add media 
to your job description. For example, this is uh, my former colleague, Donald Thompson, CEO and co-founder of the diversity movement. What I did is I uploaded our capabilities deck and stuck it right there in his job description so people can just click on it and see more about the diversity movement. I also put a link to the podcast. They do a podcast every week. So I put it right there. You can add all sorts of things, images, videos, audio, podcasts, and documents to your profile under the job descriptions. You can also add projects, publications, so many things. Now let's make it look pretty. <laughs> These are ways to dress it up and make your profile look super sharp. I use Canva every single day. I am not a trained designer, but I pretend to be one on Canva because they've got all these templates and all you got to do is swap out the pictures and the words. So these are some LinkedIn headers on, uh, on your page that I, I created for my colleagues at UNC. And then I've got this one. I've created, I don't use this one currently, but I've used this one in the past because a quick pick, a quick look and you can say, oh, all right, she used to be on television and she apparently likes to speak a lot. <laughs> <laughs> she never stops talking. Um, Vista, which I used to use for printing stuff all the time, has now started with Vista Create, which is basically the exact same thing as Canva. I, st I, I looked at it, but I decided I don't want to do two. I love Canva. And then PFP Maker. Let me show you what you can do with that. I love it. So this is my, my direct boss, Phil Bridges. I took his picture, uploaded it, and this is all free, to pfpmaker.com. And you can change out the, these are all UNC blues, and you can change out the colors on the background and broop, you literally get 30 versions of your picture. And you, with all these, so on mine, my uh, LinkedIn profile, I've got this one. It looks like he's in a studio with like a, like a background, like it was an actual photograph. It's not. It clipped out his face and put it there. Now on my Instagram, yes, the background remover, but this one does it and just dumps 20 different images right there. You download all of them on Canva or rather on Instagram. I've got a super fun one. Like I changed it out and have like a, a playful one, but on LinkedIn, I've got kind of the, the studio professional background. So I encourage you. And you also can make on PFP, you can also make a matching banner um, like this. So actually, I made this one on PFP, but you and, and you can download a whole slew of them. So with that, let's do a quick live demo because we're getting short on time. I want to make sure I'm going to stop sharing the PowerPoint and then start sharing my. Oh, that's weird. It got rid of all my little LinkedIn's. That I had. All right. Now I'm going to share. Okay. Can you all see my LinkedIn? Yes. All good. Okay. So this is my profile. I'm going to click on my own name. Now, so here, do you see my little <laughs> professional blue background there? All right. When you open up your own profile, you will see all these little pencils. That means that that section is editable. Hopefully you own your own profile, right? So that you'll be able to edit all these sections, okay? And then you will see things that other people can't see because they're not an admin. You can, so like this section right here, only I see this, only I see my analytics. Publicly, that is not seen, okay? Now, remember I talked about the featured section. So this is where there was a meaningful post. So here's that Dr. Burke's one. I wanted my network to see it. So I put it here because this featured section always lives because I enabled it. All right, so let's let me show you where you do this. I'm gonna move this down here. Okay. 
So do you see here, edit public profile and URL? Remember how I told you you can create a vanity with your name instead of, you know, Julie Johnson, four, five, six, question mark, four. <laughs> Ollie that underscore yeah. Appledore, eight something. Yep. Cool. What other Ollie Appledore is out there? Right, but just in case. So right here is where you can click and make your own name as part of your profile name. Okay. Now, do you see here? Add profile section. Open it up. And it's going to show you all these places. Add education, add position, add a career break, which I'm glad they finally did this because it's so unfair for parents who stepped out of the workforce for a, a, a whatever amount of time to care for children. And then they got the, the bots at a recruiting company knocked them out because it looks like they had this huge you know, oh, they must have been unemployed. Well, no, they were employed 100% at home, right? So they, they do have an area where you can now add to that. Recommended sections. So here's the featured that I mentioned, adding licenses and certificates, adding a course that you might have taken or completed or taught or created. I have an online course I created. I stuck it there. Adding recommendations. Here's additional. Adding projects, adding honors and awards. Test scores, I don't know who's doing that unless you got a perfect SAT. Languages, organizations, it's all right here in this section, right here. Let's see what more, okay. Oh, oh and you know that um, you can actually save your profile as a PDF, you can also create a resume out of it. It'll actually coalesce all the information and create like a traditional CV. But you go down here, so let's say, all right, let's add a featured post. Now, you could add a newsletter, an article, a link, media. But I'm going to add, I just did, it's going to pull up all my most recent posts. I just posted this video on Monday. My alma mater, I serve on their leadership board on the College of Communications at Florida State, and they asked if I would create a video for students because it's finals week just an encouraging video. And after I made it, I said, ah, I think this is, you know, a lot of those students are on LinkedIn because they have a, they have a dean down there who's all about students having a, a strong LinkedIn. So I'm going to add this to my featured section. Look at that. Now, let's have a look. Boom. There it is. Could you go back and say, how did you start that Adding that feature, you went into yes. The feature. So go. So you have to enable the feature section. So go to add profile section, okay. and then under recommended, you will see add feature. Do you see that right there? I do. Thank you so much. Yep. So click that, and then once it's opened up, you're going to want to populate it. So again, you can add videos, links. I've I add some of my best performing posts. Because th that way I know that enough people, so for this post, for example, right now, it's got 971 views. So it's performing pretty well. I posted it on Monday. Um, you'll notice I also have um, captions because I think it's extremely important to have that. Now, in the golden hour, I made sure to babysit this and then the head of the entire alumni association at Florida State, of which we have 400,000 alumni across the US, she shared my post on her profile. So now I have other inbound requests from other Florida State grads that I have not seen or met. So there, that's, that's the other cool thing. All right, let me go back to here. You can see here how I have my headline here, corporate communications, certified diversity executive, journalist, professor, TEDx, and citizen of the world. I decided, and then I added my little flags. I'm American, but I was born in Kenya and I'm an Irish citizen as well. So it's like a whole kind of, you get a, a lot of information in a short amount of time, but there's my job. See, I didn't waste this space, I put it there. But corporate communications might be something that someone searches for right now in my about section so under featured 
there's this activity where you can see the most recent things that I've been posting. The about section is where I decided to show a little bit more about myself in first person. As the daughter of Irish immigrants, it's in my DNA to be a storyteller. So it's no coincidence that my career began as a television journalist sharing the narratives of the people and communities I met along the way. In my transition from a newsroom to boardrooms and convention center stages, I've learned that everyone has an undeniable story arc in their lives that they can choose to share to make an impact. How you decide to do that is up to you, but it's in those stories that human connection and influence live. I love helping people and organizations find those messages that align with their goals to make a change in their organizations, communities, families, and elsewhere. How can I help you? Let's start a conversation. So you get a lot more about me than just reading my job titles, right? So that's, so that's a place that, and, and then here, I, I have here all the different links to go to all my things, all my, my Facebook, my, my, my speaker kit, my, my e-speakers profile, LinkedIn articles, my personal speaker website, all there. And then here are all my different job descriptions. You'll see here, I utilized the media under the DEI consultant. So um, like I put a video here, or is that a picture? Oh, that's a picture. Um, yeah, so here's a video that people can just watch right within here. Oh, you can't. Oh. <gasps> Oh, it sent me over to Vimeo. Interesting. Okay, so I must not have uploaded it directly. Now you can upload directly. So here, um, uh, goes to the YouTube. Across the job landscape, demand for skilled. Huh. I have to investigate that further. So apparently when I was adding this media, I just put the link to my YouTube or my Vimeo. But I believe you can upload it directly unless you want to send someone over to your website. I'm wondering, I just updated my speaker reel. Let's see where it goes. <gasps> I sent it to my YouTube. All right, let's see what happens when you want to add something there. So you go to a plus sign, add, I don't want to add it. No, oh no, I want to edit a current. So I'm going to go down to this one. I want to change this. Media, here you go. So then you add the media right here. Oh, so you can, you can upload. See, I want, I want people to see my other stuff. So I'm sending them over there. Now, LinkedIn would probably prefer you just keep it right there. But what happens is when I go to upload lengthier videos on LinkedIn, it takes forever. And sometimes it just doesn't go. And so it's sometimes easier just to stick in the link. Yeah. Okay, down here. Oh, I'm old. I've got a lot of jobs. Lots and lots of jobs. Um, education. I broke it down even and put my minors separately. I don't have an advanced degree, so I thought if I put three things, it might look like I have more. Um, but I also put um, Institute of Diversity Certification where I got my certified diversity stuff. So I've got that there I put under the education. Again, all of my licenses and certifications, I put all of them here. You get a fuller picture of who I am. Um, all my volunteering, the skills bit, here's my, so all the different recommendations. Oh, let's see, show pending. So apparently I've been asking for people that have not, oh, <gasps> that's on me. Oh, these people are asking me for, oh, I gotta do that. So these people have asked for me to do a recommendation, I need to do that. Publications, if you've written and published, you can add that stuff here as well. Coursework. All the things. Well, but it's, but this is what I do all day. I mean, this is what I'm doing for other people. I, I spend more time on other people's LinkedIn profiles, working on them than I do my own. But I'll take a Saturday morning when my son is still asleep. I'll just get on the computer and work on this kind of stuff. I, I have a set every Saturday morning. I try to dedicate 90 minutes to this kind of personal branding stuff. Um, again, down here, companies and groups and different things that, that you're 
following or you're a member of. These are ways to connect with other people when trying to meet new people. And then the last thing, oh my gosh, we're 101. I gotta stop. The last thing that is a new feature that I haven't even added it to the um, PowerPoint deck is you can add a video to your right here. Instead of just doing a photo, you can actually add a video where you can talk to people. It's up to 30 seconds. Hey, Sharon here. I'd love to help you tell your story better. Contact me with the information down below or hit me up on the socials, SharonDelaney.com. Look forward to talking to you. I've seen some people say that you should never introduce yourself at that because they know who you are. You're, they're on your page. So you could say, when was the last time you had to be on camera? Do you hate the way you look on camera? Let me help you out. Or whatever it might be, you know, that call to action solving the problem. Okay, questions. I have a, a question. Is there any alternative if, um, for instance, in my situation where I have actually like almost two careers, I can only have one profile and have one name, does LinkedIn, do, I, I mean, right now I have one profile and then I like to have a business and those two things are completely different from each other. I, there's plenty of people who have a side hustle mm -hmm. and all of it's on the same LinkedIn profile. Mm -hmm. It would be too difficult to do two. I, I mean, I essentially, I do too. So director of corporate communications at UNC, that is a full-time job, mm -hmm. but yet I'm still showing you, I do all these other things too. I still actually do. I'm a Maxwell speaker. So I do that on my, on my own time. I do voiceovers on my own time. All these things. Gotcha. So it's just a matter of being okay with the integration. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And using the headline, I would think that'd be a great place to shed some light on that. Yeah. A lot of people have side hustles or side interests that that's totally fine to put on there. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Oh, do we have a question from Melanie? Yes. Can you unmute yourself? Sorry, it's just a little loud in here. Um, I put it in the in the chat, but I actually attended three different colleges because college was confusing time for me. Um, so would you recommend putting like all of that in my education? I think right now I have the one where, that I actually graduated from, but I was wondering if it might offer more potential connections if I list at least two of them, if not three. You could still put the dates that you went to the other one. There's a lot of people who drink. Okay. I don't think there's anything yeah. wrong with that. <laughs> Thanks. All righty. All right. Well, thank you so much. We really appreciate all the learning, and we have a special, beautiful. Thank you so North much. Thank you. Thank you very there much. There you go. And uh, thank I love you it. For thank being you. Here today. Ne our next thank event, you. actually, I almost forgot to mention that, is coming up on May 25th. It's a luncheon over at the Sheraton Imperial. So we'd love to have you all. Um, you also get an email, I think, with the playback from today, the handouts from Sharon, mm -hmm. and probably a survey for your feedback. So thanks so much for being here. Thanks for Melanie and others online. And have a great afternoon, y'all. Thank you.